All right, you're good to go. Okay, so you know you got to think of viruses like to replicate. Trump wants to win the election, and the Fed doesn't want to cease to exist. So let's just dissect those three things. Uh, the virus is going to keep replicating. Okay, there's just no way around that. Unfortunately, uh, there's only one solution to stop it from replicating, and that's a synchronized global shutdown where we reopen with masks. And it's proven to work. China did it. That's how they were able to uh, stomp it out. And now what are they doing? They're blocking the rest of the world from going into China. How hilarious. But it makes sense because the rest of the world is doing half-assed measures that don't work. So they're smart. They will have a thriving economy while the rest of the world is begging for a cure. Um, and the cure is so easy and so simple, but it will just decimate an economy until it's done. And it doesn't work if one country does this treatment. It only works if the whole world does it at the exact same time. So we wanna reset the growth of the virus to zero as soon as possible and then reemerge with mass. And that's really the only thing that's going to cure the economy until a vaccine comes out. Uh, okay, Trump wants to get reelected. So yeah, he's all about the stock market and telling everybody that we're gonna go back at Easter, but just go look at his tone. He's trying to keep things alive in an impossible situation. Reminds me of a handful of sci-fi movies where they they put the uh, student in a test and the test is one which you can't win. So they just want to deal with uh, how you're going to. And so that's Star Trek. And then uh, what's that other, I'll try to find the other book for you guys. So Trump doesn't have a winning. There's no winning this. The only win for him will be to save lives and then use the government to give people f free money when he does this shutdown. So I think that's inevitable and coming sooner than predicted. And if we do look at his message, it's progressively becoming uh, more realistic as America slowly but surely learns how to cope with the reality that we now face. Um, so again, I, I wouldn't be uh, talking about hitting some high target on the spy. I wouldn't be talking about a V-shaped recovery and I certainly wouldn't talk about opening back up the economy by Easter. By the time we hit Easter, this will be 10 times worse than it is today. Uh, in fact, it'll be far more than that because it's more than 14 days out. So that's Especially my- I was wondering, uh, as this portfolio moves up, as we all hope it will, and you do too, I'm sure, is there a stop loss you're considering a trade like a, well, a non in the money trailing stop loss you're looking at? On what, the puts? No, on the whole portfolio. Yeah, each, each position has its own risk management. Uh, so the put options, there's no stop loss on those. Those are just there and sitting back, uh, waiting for the stock market to, to pull back here. Um, the TLT, we're managing risk with the married put. So every so often we're buying a put option so that we have limited downside risk and that does completely control the risk. And on GDX, we have uh, a very tight put option on that to control that risk. So each position certainly has limited risk. The call options, there's no stop loss. Those are just a, uh, the, the, the size of those investments is the risk management on that part of the portfolio. Hello? <laughs> My hands are so full. Yeah, let me go here. Uh, CoPro, do you have a question? or Tony Layton, anyone else? Tyler G? Uh, Tyler, go ahead. And I haven't even gotten into the trailer, but it is the same trade we've been doing since Friday. So it's, go ahead, Tyler. And uh, Jason, uh, just for some context, Tyler is our uh, newest pro member. Oh, great. Uh, Tyler, let's see if we get your microphone working there. Let's put Mike can you hear me oh there he is hey tyler yeah you hear me good yes sir okay so um i've gotten the uh the puts done for the okay. spy 
and I have gotten the TLT. I'm funding, getting the money over to the uh, TD Ameritrade account. Okay. So um, basically, they're limiting me on purchasing the options. So that that one um, buy to open four three twenty for the one fifty seven TLT call. This one. Am I st am I still grabbing that since it's still it's coming up next week? Yeah, I like all our trades. So my basic prediction is a violent crash in stocks, but a slow, steady grind in the bond market. Okay, so I should, because I'm still kind of waiting, either I'm going to be able to get that today or maybe Monday or Tuesday, um, since that becomes like a weekly. I should yeah, so, so just realize if you grab a, tr if I still have it on the screen, I do think it's still a good uh, opportunity, one. But two, uh, your cost basis could potentially have decreased compared to when I placed it because yeah. of the time premium eroding. So, um, so yeah, we have a, a pretty simple outlook is that the economic output of the United States and globally is going to shrink. Okay. So exactly how much it's going to shrink up, I, I'm not sure, but I think a significant decrease in economic output. So that's, that nets out to be negative for the equities market. I don't care how you calculate that. Um, so unemployment's gonna go up, economic GDP is gonna go down. And um, so that's basically what we're looking at in the stock market and why it should have a significant sell off. The bond yeah. market is going to finance, trying to get the real economy out of the, out of the toilet. So to do that, they so far they've promised two trillion dollars, and it looks like they're going to promise a whole lot more than that. So that money doesn't just come out of thin air; it has to be pulled out of the economy. So it's going to have a negative effect on pretty much every other asset class out there. Um, so in in general, I expect the bond market to punish the stock market until it's completed the job of raising all this capital and rewarding the big banks who finance it. Um, so we don't know just how fast they're gonna go auction off that $2 trillion, but I would expect they will spread it out over the course of a, a couple of years. Um, so once you realize that's the big, the two big plays happening, um, you can see, okay, well, they, they're not incentivized to make the TLT just skyrocket overnight. They want to make it a buy and hold investment for the big banks to buy these treasuries, hold them as long as possible, pile into it, uh, and, and hold until the complete amount of capital has been raised and the underlying problem has been fixed. So slow grind on TLT. We're going to just slowly rotate new call options into TLT like clockwork. I'm delaying us till next Thursday to add uh, some more future months. But yeah, I think just in general, my main prediction is the TLT will slowly grind higher. So that makes sense to mostly buy the at the money calls. And then the stock market, I think we're going to have a ferocious crash. Um, so in that setup, you really don't want to screw around with timing because time's not on our side. That's why I'm happy to put this position on and not worry about any kind of short-term volatility because who cares if I lose 50% of the value on these, if I'm aiming to make 500 to 5,000% on each of these contracts. Yeah, and yeah. once the opportunity comes, it's gone and you won't have this opportunity ever again. So it's a really, um, it, it's unfortunate we didn't have this set of trades back in January, uh, but it's just so hard to believe I was buying puts and trying to do the married put strategy on the SPY. So we, we had a little bit of drawdown trying to play the SPY, but very little because of those puts. But I didn't flip us outright short until last Friday. And so I, I think if you did nothing other than these five trades, literally, and then stayed in cash, you'd be doing quite well uh, when we check back in a year. Now, is there other opportunities? Yeah, I think we have the slow grind in the TLTs. So, so just in general, yeah, definitely still a good opportunity to grab that. And it's not like we've had the TLT pop up. Uh, I'll get nervous about the TLT when we come towards, I always go to Pavlov and his, his trick with the dog and the bell. 
I think the market's been trained to take some profits as we approach 1% on the yield. So only a few dirty rascals in our group got out uh, with a huge payday like Mark and Kathleen Crickman. Who got out with, uh, who snuck out on that 175, 180 TLT? I, I had told people that Monday, look, if you got bills to pay, take some profits, but I'm gonna hold, I think this is gonna keep crashing. And it did keep crashing, but what I didn't anticipate is it would crash so hard that Ray Dalio and all these big banks would have to sell their treasuries just to stay liquid. Um, but yeah, who, who, was, who was fortunate to sell some of their calls when we were at 178, 179? I actually Adam sold Brooks. a bunch on um, the Friday before, <laughs> and then it popped up on Monday. So I, I I caught some of that, but not quite all of it. Oh yeah, you got you got out on Friday, huh? What was it at on Friday? It was like one seventy two or something. Gary, how's it going? Yeah, it was around one seventy. Yeah, and Ron Brooks typed in and said he did as well. Way to go, I Ron. I, I did, and then I got back in them too. So, oh, you got in at the high, so you got so you got no, out. I got out at the high, and then I got back in. Oh, oh so you're cleaning house then, huh? Yeah, and I, I've got the full trunk. Nice. Hey, Ron. On a side note, I just replied to your uh, Gmail email address if you want to check that out. Oh, thanks, Ryan. I really appreciate it. No I problem. Really Okay, but let's get Tyler G back on. You had very good questions. So sorry for going off on a side story there. But I think it thing. helps you understand kind of the general philosophy we have coming forward. Yeah, no, I'm completely good with it. It's just because of that expiration was coming up just in a matter of days. I should just still try to go after that. And then, um, let's see. So I entered into the spreadsheet last night what I've done so far. Dang, you're on top of it. You even got the spreadsheet going? All right. I have to make sure I enter those things in as I do them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you do it as you go, it's kind of like keeping your uh, sink clean in the kitchen. So I don't if know if, you, you to if you're able to take a look at what I entered to make sure I put them in the right spot. Because when I was sure. Watching, um, Ryan, can you grab his link for me and uh, paste it and I'll pull it up? <laughs> You don't mind us putting it on the webinar screen, right? Totally fine, yeah. Cool. Uh, let me grab it. Well, you're a very good student there, Tyler. Good job. Who else has got their spreadsheet going out there? Just curious. I'm, Actually, I'm, I'm trying to do what you said, just set it up for April 1st. But um, I yeah, started I thinking about it. I started thinking about it going, how am I going to then reflect um, what's already in effect since if we're you want a cheat sheet guide how to start immediately is here's what i do for you guys who've been following forever mm -hmm. on april 1st pretend that's when you bought all your open positions and all your stocks and just put it in at the current price so okay. you're going to have a zero percent return in april and all of your open positions and then start following from there and then ignore any closed positions in the past so you could pretend you, uh, that would be a cheat sheet to just say, okay, I don't care about the past. I could see what I, my balance started and ended with. So I know I did you know, such and such total return, but now I wanna start tracking and I don't wanna go back 12 months of data. That would be one way. Donald, how is your spreadsheet going, bud? Uh, fine, I, in fact, you got some time, or one of you has some time, I'd like for you to take a, a look at it. Uh, I do have a question on it, Jason. Uh, what you just said is that you're going to start uh, April 1st to use the price, your real prices on it, correct? Not the market price on it. On if first. you wanted to just start your tracking on April 1st and not worry about inputting all your old trades, then on April 1st, I would look at the current value of all my assets and pretend that I had bought them today? Okay, no, I've, I've already got all my trades in. I just need for you to look at it and see. Oh, well then, see then you're doing the fine. Right yeah. yeah, of course. But yeah. I, I, did, I did enter them at the prices that I had paid for them. Okay, Jack Tan, this is a good question. Jack Tan says, who can I call to walk me on the spreadsheet? So we don't do one-on-ones. Uh, number one, that's illegal for us to do that. 
uh, but we do group webinars obviously uh, all the time. So that's when I can help you, Jack. So if you want me to review what you have, I can certainly do that on uh, on our webinars. Tyler spreadsheets in your Telegram, Jay. Okay. And I'll, I'll go through that in a bit. Uh, if anybody else wants me to look at their spreadsheet, I can start doing a few a day. I mean, I'm happy to just put four, three to four hours a day into these webinars here with you guys as a group, so. Okay, yeah, Jack, if you want, I can co can go through that on today's webinar. I'm also, I'm looking at, I found a little uh, accountant lady who works for Gap here in town who also likes options trading. I'm seeing if she could potentially come in and just work on spreadsheets a couple hours a day live in a webinar group format, just so that you guys have even more access to, uh, to an accountant who can help you fill out the spreadsheet and young and quick with clicking. Jason, when did you anticipate having it so it would automatically update the option pricing? Uh, I'm gonna hopefully have that on my spreadsheet by Monday. What about and, hours? <laughs> so, so then I'll beta test to make sure it works and then I'll hire the programmer to update the cloning engine and then get you guys a new one out. Okay. Yeah, that's a big pain in the butt so, for sure. So in the next couple of weeks? Maybe, maybe by Thursday, um, but perhaps the next Thursday. So yeah, I'll have it in my spreadsheet. And the way it's gonna work guys is so sweet, it's so easy. It's just gonna be, all you're gonna do is uh, paste the code into wherever you want it to pop. So it'd be in the sell price for me. So it'll just automatically sit there and update. And then when you close it, you'll just put the real price you had. Okay. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah, that'd be that def especially now that we have all these positions open. That's a big pain in the butt. Well, it takes a lot of time. Yeah, you're telling yeah. me. And then also too, uh, I don't know if I'm just really busy, but uh, I let my brokerage account do it for me. <laughs> yeah, so that's really good for uh, real time. But if you want to have the nice, pretty monthly returns and all organized per asset class, the spreadsheet is the only way to do that. But sure. But yeah, it's good to do both. But that's yeah, where you could easily time. get your prices. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do for you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I don't have the time. <laughs> You know, there's two groups of people. Some people don't like spreadsheets. Some people do. Um, plenty of people do fine without it. Plenty of people do great with it. I'll go ahead, Karen. I, yeah, I have, um, I have a spy question. Um, now I've got all the positions in place. I haven't moved anything. I wasn't as uh, smart as the rest of the crowd on the TLT. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, the more I started to think about the positioning on this and the long term of this, I started to reflect again over the past, whatever, 10, 12 years, ever since the last smash, which was a, a banking issue, of course, um, you know, more financial issue. But my, my thinking about this has been that they have pushed everybody for all these years into equities in order to get a return. And of course, um, all these companies have been doing nothing but buying back their stock all these years, which of course has been fueling it. The increase has been, few, of course, it gives everybody their bonuses and blah, blah, blah. So with this package coming out, it, they're going to, they're, apparently what's in it is that they cannot do their stock buybacks, which I find interesting. And so I started thinking about it. Is that Which is great you... for, that's great for the companies we wanna buy, um, like Boeing, for example, at the very bottom. Wait till that's just. Well, is that also some of the thinking that you have that this that the SPY will continue to, to go down because they simply won't be able to do what they did before. So how- Okay, how so, the, so there's two big stimulus packages going through. Uh, uh -huh. the, re the real just dumpster stocks. I mean, these are just gonna be life support, total, total trash companies for until this is over. Uh, they're the ones gonna get this stimulus and they're not gonna be able to pay out bonuses or do stock buybacks. Right. The good companies uh, now have more access to corporate credit than ever before. So that's uh, the Fed. I got it because they're not really allowed to buy ETFs, but somehow they've partnered with the treasury and they've come in and bought 
uh, let me make a new chart. Also for crypto fans, I think you're gonna get a huge, huge crash in crypto that you should buy during the stock crash. So I'm looking at trying to get Ethereum and Bitcoin maybe uh, 30 to 50% less than it is currently. Uh, okay, but let's look at, so let me make a new layout here. You may have to make that a boot camp special. <laughs> it, it, it will be, yeah, we for sure. Um, okay. And again, not much money should be risked in crypto, guys. Very small, like one to two percent, but it can make a big difference. Um, okay, so LQD. The Fed has officially loaded up on this one. Look at that return you had if you had front ran the, the Fed here. Mm -hmm. So, okay, that's, that's good for your Amazon, Apple. <laughs> but it really, what's really happening? The, the people who own the top of the S&P 500, they know what's going on. They are borrowing money through the corporate bond market, throwing in their filings, selling as fast as they can and, and using the money they borrow from the Fed through LQD to sell their stock. So it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a very delicate little balancing act to keep the stock market going up like this, uh, but it's been broken. And uh, I'm afraid the economic data is gonna get far worse not better. Um, so it's foolish to think that this is uh, going to be a long-term recovery here because uh, the real economic pain hasn't even begun. Yeah. We haven't even, we're, uh, the movie just started, unfortunately. So yeah, the, uh, some of the companies I do want to buy will have that no, no buyback clause. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that would be good for us to, to really crash that stock before we buy it. So that's a great point. But I do want to point out that the Fed is, you know, why do we have a little bit of a bounce in the stock market? Well, it's probably mostly due to uh, the Fed. Oh, wait, this is, let me get the right chart up. Well, these guys are rebalancing end of the quarter too, you know? Yeah. So LQD, that's the Fed has pumped a lot of money into the corporate bond market. Hmm. which is going to allow these insiders to keep selling and get out. Uh, Tony, go ahead. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And good point, as always. You're See, being a little too kind. <laughs> yes, we're still in Q&A, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, we're just... Uh, we're in Q&A and um, the trailer, it's the same. So most of you guys are filled. Yeah, I got, I got one question to ask you. Sure. I'm, I'm light on my silver. Should I go ahead and, and bring it back up to the 1%? On the uh, boot camp trade? Yeah, uh -huh. Yeah, I like that one. Okay. okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I like that one. I think it's up a little bit, what, 80, 50, 80% so far. Yeah, I'm, I'm in it at 82 cents. I know I'm going to pay more than that. Oh, dog, you. <laughs> you got in cheap. Very good. It was, it was one smart. It was luck. And what's funny is the, the direction went against us, just that implied vol just making it work. So that's, yeah. um, that's some, it goes to show you how crazy implied volatility is. Boy, isn't that the truth? When, when the price goes down, and the option goes up. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't happen that often. Uh, Tony Layton, please. Yeah, on that SLV trade, I got in at 90 cents, but uh, you know, it's moved up quite a bit. Should we look for uh, either a further out or, or a, uh, a cheaper put there? Cheaper call? Let me call. Uh, I uh, like, I, I like, well, that one's a 24 strike two years out. Um, and so I'm hoping it pumps up to somewhere between 34 and 44 once all this money circulates through the economy and starts creating inflation and all that. Um, so yeah, I'll have to evaluate that more on Tuesday for any other options, but um, 
I'll, I'll, I'll dig into that and see if I have any other uh, good strikes to recommend for you. Okay, Tony? Yeah, because that's $13 for that same uh, call now. Uh, well, I think it went $1.50. Yeah, no, I still like that one. I, I like that strike based on just historical. Uh, let's look at our gold. Is there any volume on that strike? Yeah, I like that one just based on looking at the kind of spike we've seen in silver in the past. Let me make a new chart so we can just look at that one. And, and just for anybody curious, this is something that we're managing in our boot camp, which you get as a bonus if, if you um, are new. So we're looking at silver. So again, we got to realize when we're playing silver or crypto or anything like that, you're uh, you're basically, basically betting against the, the banking system. And they hate when people go buy gold and silver. It's, they want to have it all. And they want to sit there and dump it on you the second it goes up and try to keep it suppressed. And they've been doing that for quite some time. But here's the run-up we had in silver. Uh, if we get a run-up anywhere near this nature, you're going to hit a 10,000% return on that. So uh, the amount of money printing we're doing today is in the last week, we, our balance sheets, you know how we used to check that H1 filing? I still do that, but it's just so ridiculous. They've put a trillion dollars on the balance sheet in the last three weeks. So that took a better part of a year last time. So we're, we're growing the balance sheet something like 50 times faster than ever before or at least 10 times faster than ever before in history. Uh, so it's not unreasonable to think that we can get a run up of equal magnitude, if not greater in the silver market. Uh, Cause this is very simple, but think about it. That was to cover up, that was the four and a half trillion dollars over the course of this period. Not even that much in, in this exact period. I don't know if you looked, uh, but there's at 20 and at uh, 30, there's 15,000 calls out there each. Yeah, so the you know this is going to be a manipulated, manipulated little manipulated little puppy, but uh, I think they could lose control over it at some point. So yeah, Jason. I really I really like that play. Jason, can you um, go over some of the, uh, the Fed balance sheet stuff and the, the repo? Because um, yeah, I was reading an article that was talking about um, there's there's no bids on the repo market, but I don't re didn't really quite fully understand what that meant. Yeah, and, and what yeah. it means to us. Not much activity in the repo, uh, but they've opened up. The more acronyms they come out with the worse it's getting okay so they've got a repo facility for every individual asset class that out there for every institution is basically if you're willing to take the risk and put it on your balance sheet they're willing to give you the money um is the bottom line but yeah let's check out the last few h41 releases so, so i'm just using this number now just to make life easy so this will show, uh, tell you the average change. And um, so they added half a trillion dollars just right here on the March 26th update. So that was yesterday. Um, so <laughs> that's huge. So there you go. You get a little, we get a little stock bounce. It only cost us half a trillion dollars. So that's definitely bullish for gold. Uh, bullish for if normally I'd be bullish for equities unless you thought uh, earnings were going to fall off a cliff because everybody's going to be unemployed and stuck at home with no income and real estate market's going to crash. Uh, the week before, 240 billion added to the balance sheet. Yeah, they now have something like five different facilities open serving. Um, every just everything you can possibly come up with the only thing they're not doing yet is directly buying stocks which i think they'll eventually have to do to stop this from going 
too far. Maybe they do it at the 50% mark. Maybe they do it at the 75% mark. At some point, I think the Fed will have to uh, essentially put a, a floor in the stock market so that people have confidence to at least buy at the floor. That may not be bullish for uh, buy and hold because you'll be worried that the Fed is going to have to let go of their shares over time. But uh, Tony, I think you got your mic muted, but go ahead. I think we have an open mic for anybody who wants to talk. This is, oh, hey, hey, Tony. Yeah, I just thought it was uh, pretty positive for that trade since there's 15,000 contracts open there at, uh, tw at 20 and 15,000 or approximately at 30 on that silver trade. Wow, so they're more aggressive than us. Yeah. Here's what I like to try to do with uh, the strikes and all that. So I, as you guys know, uh, to really get the biggest bang for your buck with the call option, at least. If you can put your strike halfway from where you think the potential uh, end price will be, and then give yourself tight twice the time premium it'll take to reach that. So with the 24 strike, you know, I'm hoping we can get somewhere around 32 to 34 uh, within a year. Now I might be early. So I, as I've told you folks, I'm gonna, I'm gonna increase that position every four months on the SLV. So that, that's kind of the time frame I'm looking at. Is every quarter or every three to four months, every just a bit over a quarter, I think it makes sense to add to that position. And that's that's your home run. You know, you can, if you get one percent of your account and nail a. a 10,000% return, and you've just doubled your whole account for the year with 1% risk. So that's the nature of that trade. Um, and luckily, you know, this data right here gives you evidence that uh, this could happen. I mean, this is what we want to see. We want to see the Fed diluting the dollar by increasing its balance sheet. And so it's doing that at the fastest pace in history. Uh, Jack, go ahead. Let me see if we have any questions in the chat box. Jason, what trade was it that you were talking about? I wasn't even following on that. Uh oh, Jack that... likes those big return trades. I, I, uh, Perked his ears up. Uh, okay, I'll show you guys the trade. It's fine. Didn't move that chat box, Jay. Oh, you guys can see that? Yeah. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. Uh, okay, so here's our pro spreadsheet. Here's the current two trades we have out in the boot camp. Uh, it's the January 21st, 2022, 24 strike SLV call option. We bought this call option at the high and silver promptly crashed, which is the exact opposite of what we were hoping for. But the implied volatility was so great that it's actually caused the uh, call option to appreciate, which is hilarious. So, so yeah, we're up even though we had the exact opposite uh, reaction that we were looking for. Now, the good news is because it's so low, uh, if this were to go back up, we'd have extra implied volatility. And, and so, yeah, it's kind of the same is true with these puts. I hope you guys realize that to have the puts go against us is going to help increase the potential implied volatility when it does go back down. So I'm not worried about a little pullback in our puts, just if anybody's worried about that. Uh, okay, let's see. So any other questions out there? I still need to do an official read through of the trade alert and then I can look at some, some other stuff we have. But yeah, if we have any other questions, please. And we still have a, the link in your uh, Telegram chat. 
Sure. Yeah. So I'll do, I'll do that. I'll work on spreadsheets at the very end for cool. anybody who wants me to look at their spreadsheets. Any other questions or comments? Would it, uh, since that silver trade is up, would it hurt to put a, a few more of those calls on based on the profit it's made? <laughs> I, I would have the 1% recommendation uh, and then add to it every four months. I was thinking yep. the same thing, so I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> yeah, time's going to be tough because remember, they, the banks know that people are going to speculate that, oh, if we're printing money, the gold and silver is going to go up. So you better believe they're going to try to punish people getting too excited about that until until they want it to go up, obviously. Right now, they got to raise the money in the bond market. So we might have some action in the gold and silver market, but I think every time it gets too hot and too, too, too much excitement that they're going to dump and have a big short position in those markets, um, which we know. We know that JP Morgan, HSBC, they, they use a fractional reserve yeah, I'm going to call it BS. Our whole banking system is based on this BS fractional reserve crap. And they're doing the same thing with GLD. So it's 10 times the assets under management relative to the gold they have. And they have a constant short position against it. Uh, and guess what? They, you know, they control the, the spot price of gold and silver because they, they own the, the most of it, all these big banks. So I would expect every time it gets too hot, they'll try to throw some water on it by just dumping a bunch and cashing out some profits in their short position. And then as everybody is fleeing, you know, all the retailers are fleeing, they'll, they'll buy it back up and stabilize it, get all their gold back and maybe more, more than they had to start with. And I can see them doing the same thing in other competitive markets to uh, fiat currencies uh, like Bitcoin and Ethereum. So, so I am hoping to catch, um, Bitcoin and Ethereum in a in a big crash at a cheap price. Um, so here's let me go through the trade alert and then we'll go through some charts. Look at Twitter. Any other questions or comments before I go through a presentation? Okay, great. Well, let me just read through the trade alert. And then we'll go from there. Okay. Let's start off with the webinar teaser. Coronavirus will bring Trump to his knees by Easter. There's no way on God's green earth, Trump opens the economy back up by Easter. In fact, I expect the exact opposite, the start of a synchronized global lockdown that lasts for 30 to 60 days. And again, I hope we can get some masks made in that time frame, and at least get our doctors and nurses protected if nothing else. Uh, but realistically, the strategy that worked for China is to lock down everyone, um, and there's a great diary of a fellow in China, an American, who's still in lockdown, right, right near the epicenter of this. It's a great read. This guy did not want to wear a mask. He did not want to get locked down. It's, he's a character. Um, but he's still trying to get out of this town. Right now, they're allowed to go. It's, it's what, 63 days later now since he's been in this quarantine. And now he can go out and talk to other villagers because they've had no cases for 14 days, but he still can't leave the little town he's in. Um, I'll share that link. It was a great read. It took me about an hour last night. Goes through all the emotions that he had to go through to deal with uh, the slow but sure removal of liberty, of freedom to, to travel and do all sorts of things and everybody trying to make him wear a mask and, and all that. Um, and how it's probably going to spread everywhere and we're all going to go through a similar experience. So bottom line is uh, what we're seeing in death counts today in two weeks without a real shutdown, not a half-assed shutdown, likely you're going to have another zero added to that. So 
Um, that'll be by April 10th. So I, I don't see Trump being able to pitch that we're gonna go back to work when the death count is increased tenfold um, in two weeks. So unfortunately, that, that's the track we're on is that every two weeks you add a zero and I would not worry about confirmed cases or recoveries uh, because we're, we're now maxing out our testing capacity. What is being tested is at mortem. And so our best leading indicator to how bad it is and how bad it will be, and as well as when we could expect this to have worked its way through enough people, uh, I think your best indicator now is, is the total deaths, unfortunately. So I'd, I'd love for that death count to slow down, but it doesn't, it's, it's speeding up. And once you really study the nature of the cause, uh, there's just one solution. There's only one solution to get out of this. And it's, uh, it's a, it's a very strict lockdown for at least 30 days. I don't think 30 days would do the trick. That would really reset the clock and let us flush out everyone who's infected. Right now, my best estimate is that one in 10,000 humans has it. So if we do the shutdown soon, the economic damage will be much less than if we wait two weeks, because in two weeks, we'll be closer to one in a thousand humans having it. If we go another two weeks, you can see it gets progressively worse extremely quickly. And that's why I really uh, don't think it's smart to talk about uh, patterns in the sand in terms of technical analysis or trying to time uh, what's inevitable. Uh, now, so Trump's saying, well, we're gonna look at which counties have low counts and let them open up. And then we're gonna do more strict measures on those that are uh, having more severe problems. The bottom line is the, the measures we've taken so far are not really stopping the spread uh, to the degree that would have a lasting uh, impact. And so almost without question, there's no chance that things are going back to normal by Easter. I think it's gonna be the beginning of a much more severe lockdown. So, so that's the basic analysis. Um, but the good news, again, the solution is something we can absolutely do, and it's been proven to work in China. So the solution is very simple. You, you let everybody who has a sickness go through the process. That process takes about 60 days at most, as little as 30, but as, mu as much as 60. The, the folks who have it are going to be immune to it and not become a spreader once they've gone through the whole process of dealing with the virus. So if we do that, we can basically reset the clock to zero and then reemerge with masks uh, until a vaccine comes out. So I, I think that's what the world's gonna slowly but surely come to a realization. Um, and until that happens, I wouldn't be counting on any uh, stock market rallies. So that's the basic analysis on that. I just got an announcement. Our school is officially shut down for the rest of the year. Yeah. Uh, okay, so what's the trade alert? Uh, per 70, so if you're already an existing member, there's no changes today, go directly to step two if you're new. If you're new, per 75,000 following portfolio builder, this is your set of put options, and that will cost about $4,500 and less than 6% of your assets. Target return on these are large. You know, it, it really depends on the implied volatility, how fast we go down, um, but upwards of 500 to 5,000% return on each of these trades. So this is really, I believe, a trade that could do it for you for the entire year. I mean, this could literally be it. Put this on, sit back, stay safe, stay sane, and keep a lot of cash to buy stocks for significantly less than they cost now. That's my big picture uh, 
of what I think can easily be accomplished. Um, so here's all the screenshots of where I took the trade Friday. We had limit down Sunday. So these were all up. And then they came in with uh, Bill Ackman and all these billionaires saying, oh, the bottom's in, guys. We're, and we got Trump telling everybody we're going back to work, that Americans want to work. We're meant to work. We must work. Nobody wants to be stuck at home. He's telling you what you want to hear. Uh, but I'm afraid uh, he doesn't get to pick the timeline with this. Um, and he's not going to get reelected if we have uh, just a complete meltdown in society. He will get reelected if he can save lives and hand out free money to everybody. They'll love it. So I think, uh, I think that the virus wants to propagate and there's no stopping it outside of what I've outlined. It definitely works, which is why China is now banning foreigners from coming into their country, which is hilarious. Uh, Trump wants to get reelected. He can't do that if people are falling over dead everywhere, which is going to happen. It is happening. New York City. And the Fed's going to do what they can do. The Fed's not going to cease to exist. All the Fed can do is print money and lower interest rates. So that's why we want to own bonds. Um, and also, that's where all the money has to float. You know, follow the money. Everybody knows that saying. Well, the money is going to go to the government to try to rescue the economy. So that's where all the money is going to be drawn. Follow that money uh, because big banks don't like to lose. They like to win. So clearly they're not going to, uh, especially with a system they control 100%. They have 100% control over the prices of bonds uh, and the complete legal right to buy and sell them. So it's silly to think that they're going to punish themselves. Uh, in their own game. So here's screenshots of the options I took. They're all down 30% or so, so you can get in for cheaper. If we haven't crashed by next Friday, I'm willing to potentially increase our position uh, to get a little bit more exposure. But at this point, no changes. Our buy and hold portfolio has a little drawdown because uh, we added some short inverse ETFs, which uh, per thousand. Here's how I have our buy and hold portfolio. This again is for people not trading options. So if you want a very passive strategy that's purely using ETFs uh, per thousand, I still have the exact same allocation and this will help you benefit from a sell-off in stocks as well as uh, a push into the bond and precious metal markets. Now, if you're a pro member, you also have a set of call options on the TLT in a large position in the TLT. Plus you have a position in GDX that's protected with a put and a couple GLD calls. Now I do admit those might've been too short of a duration and potentially uh, a little early. So I think the next time I, I haven't sold these yet. Everybody likes asset. I'm not recommending selling them. I'll hold these uh, until near the, expiration. I think that gold could have another bit of a rally and get these to a higher valuation. I'll look for the next crash in gold to go into some probably two-year leaps the same way we're playing silver. Uh, so again, I'm not recommending to sell those yet, but I'm also uh, realizing that we probably were a little early to the precious metals. The gold bugs may have to wait a little while here to hit their big payday because uh, I think that the bond market's going to hog all the fun uh, for the foreseeable future and, and probably about two years minimum. It depends on how fast they want to sell the debt, which we watch daily. So it's no big secret to, uh, to watch how fast they're going to raise the money. So we'll watch uh, the 30 year trips for whatever reason, they can't seem to figure out how to make the technology work for the 50 and 100 year bonds. So they're just going to roll this out. It sounds like they're going to roll out most of this two trillion into the 30 year treasury, which is insane because right now it's only 800 billion in assets. Uh, so we're still waiting for the details of how they're going to split up this debt they need to sell, how long it's going to take and what durations are going to be sold. Uh, but the big picture is here's the yield curve. The green line is your January, inverted yield curve, 
February inverted yield curve. Then they came and cut the rates to 50 basis points and, or to one, and then they cut it to zero. So this is straighten the curve. Uh, we're starting to see these guys bounce into negative territory. So I think we'll see some big profits on the TLT as this approaches 1%, maybe a little bit of a bounce where we'll reload and get really aggressive to, to burst past the 1% yield on the 30 year. Probably have another bounce at this 50 basis point uh, where we'll start taking some profits. I think that'll be another big Pavlov's dog sort of, we've never seen this in history. Everybody's gonna freak out, take some profits, but I think it does go lower. I think we're gonna see this 30 year get close to zero, if not go negative. And so the best reason to think that is because Germany pushed their 30 year into sub zero for quite some time last year. So as long as we're seeing other central banks go deep negative, and we can anticipate that the United States could at least approach these realms. So again, price targets are somewhere around 180 to hit 1%, 240 to get to that half a percent. And they'll be looking at somewhere around 320 on the TLT to get crazy and go towards zero. Now, again, happy to adjust this. The real thing that I'm looking at is, okay, we know there's 2 trillion that needs to be raised to the government. We can track that debt being sold and then realize the investors have to be paid handsomely for taking this risk. Uh, so that'll really tell me the timeline of when to cut bait on the bond market. Uh, it won't be until well after all that money has been raised and the Fed has vacuumed all those bonds out via QE for a profit. Okay, let me pull up some charts, look at some Twitter stuff, and then we'll go into Q&A, then we'll take a little break and work on some spreadsheets. Okay, so here's our SPY. So, yeah, I think that we could easily crash into this 150 to 100 range, unfortunately. Uh, the longer they wait, to, to do the 60 day lockdown and get all the equipment ready. So there's no point in doing a lockdown until we know we have masks. And there seems to be a huge difficulty getting ventilators and masks right now. So that might be a reason why they wait to do a hardcore shutdown uh, is that they just don't have the supply side ready to come out of this with a solution. Um, so the more people this infects before we do a real lockdown, the more stress we're going to have with people getting sick and rushing to the hospital. Um, more, more stores continuing to be shut down, more employees calling in sick, more just general issues for the economy. If you noticed where we bought our puts, uh, I do expect us to have some resistance levels at these different levels, just like we saw right here with that bounce. I'm expecting to see a good bounce here, a good bounce here. Um, and then I think the Fed would start buying up stocks if we do get to anywhere near this level. So that's some looks at the S&P 500. The next chart, we're comparing TLT, that's your 30-year treasury, to stocks. And again, I believe the bond market's going to essentially suffocate the stock market and hog all the resources of the economy. Uh, so I do anticipate this orange line will keep going up. Uh, as the uh, stock market keeps falling. So we, we were predicting this for quite some time and have slowly watched uh, this jaw close and now cross. Here's some interest rates, 30 year treasuries in the largest bond markets, sovereign bond markets. So we have a DE is Germany in orange. We have France in turquoise. We have Italy in the dark purple. And then we have China. Now, funny enough, look whose yield is going up uh, relative to all the others. Good old Chinese. So the Chinese are keeping their money, uh, their powder dry. Um, you know, what did China do? They basically, I think what they've done is calculated that 
they can get away with literally murder in terms of not really dealing with the crisis, just barricading everyone into their houses, letting them either survive or die, throwing up all these makeshift. They sure knew exactly what to do, didn't they, once they did ring the bell. Uh, now they're blocking foreigners from getting into their country. They're all wearing masks. They just are slowly getting out of these 60-day lockdowns. Uh, so they know exactly how to deal with this. So did Russia. Russia was right off the gate closing the border before there was even a single case. Funny how all of China's allies, anyway, their yield is going up as they're getting back to work while France, Italy, Germany, and the United States are, uh, their yields are crashing. Hmm. So anyways, that's a look at the bond market. The lower we see Germany, France, and Italy push their yields, the lower we could anticipate the US being able to get away with on theirs. So that's a good leading indicator there. Okay, now in this one, we're looking at emerging markets against China, South Korea, and the SPY. Just see how these markets are behaving. It's just amazing to see how correlated all these different markets are. Uh, so again, in um, in the orange, we have FXI, that's China, outperforming everyone. Interesting. Uh, then we have emerging markets in the red and green channel, um, underperforming China. China is the biggest chunk of emerging markets. Then we have South Korea and the US. Uh, now, usually South Korea is sort of like a flimsy version of the US market. It, it's going down faster or going up faster. But now we have South Korea and US uh, acting as if they're the same market cap. So that's not good. That's certainly not good. Now we can come over here to look at some gold charts. Okay, so we have the SPY as the baseline, and we have gold, or sorry, we have SPY in the purple. We have silver in yellow, spot silver. We have GDX, the gold miners in orange, and then we have spot gold as the candlestick. And so let's go to a percent change basis. Hey, Jason, uh, Jack Ken asked if there is a website uh, that he can find that. It Which one? About two minutes ago. Um, uh, I think Jason's just looking at his personal charts. Yeah, I'm in uh, Trading View, is the charting uh, website, so I can definitely show that. I think that's the name of the website. Yeah, really beautiful charts. I, I like their platform. Uh, okay, so in general, we're seeing some correlation to gold and stocks, which is an interesting correlation for sure. Um, so again, that would lead me to believe that there will be opportunities. So if we believe that the stock market will crash and that's going to cause a lot of correlated assets that are maybe don't necessarily make sense to be tied to the profit and earnings of normal corporations like gold and crypto. But for whatever reason, enough people have them trading with this high level of correlation that a stock market sell-off could cause some volatility in those two markets. Again, gold, silver, Bitcoin, Ethereum, are the main assets I'm interested in. So I, it does lead me to think that it, there might be a good entry point to uh, to wait for in the future. Now, that's not 100% guaranteed, but it does seem to be the correlation uh, that we can look at there. Also, here's the one time silver outperforms everything is the yellow. So you can see not very often in history does silver outperform anything, but there's this one rare moment that every investor knows about, especially those who uh, are gold bugs. And that's where it just blew out the return against the uh, 
gold during the last huge round of QE. And that's after we had had QE in the system for quite some time. So QE started at the very end of 2008 and went on for several years. And they started manipulating interest rates and all kinds of crazy stuff. But that's when the gold silver era came quickly to an end. And that's why also I want to be a little patient. So look for big dips and then buy those leaps. We're probably going to have to sit a long time to catch the big run-ups in precious metals. Uh, but I do think that's going to be the single highest returning uh, asset when you do catch those big spikes. Okay, currency markets. Uh, the dollar is starting to weaken a little bit. Um, I think a big warning sign could be the Japanese yen getting too strong. So we are seeing the yen start to strengthen. The Aussie dollar, boy, if you want to go take a vacation, go to Australia. You've got massive buying power there. Uh, CNH, we know the Chinese don't want, they don't like that we're diluting the dollar which is going to give us a huge advantage. Uh, now they've been doing it for decades. So it's, it's funny, but um, I think China's trying to devalue their currency against the dollar now because they're seeing all the printing we're doing. Uh, the Euro is strengthening a little bit, but in general has been weak, weakening against the dollar. Here's our oil. Oh God, it's still crashing. So we got oil, crude oil in the bar chart. This is really the, this was the stab to the back. We we're all focused on this virus spreading and causing shutdowns, stock markets crashing. And then what, what happens right when no one else is, if Russia comes in, dumps, dumps oil, uh, supply side into the oil market. And this is really what got us and got everybody's uh, margin calls. And it's the pain may not be over. Who knows how low this will go? Could go another 50%. And again, I do have a lot of excitement to pick up oil and natural gas um, at some point, but pr probably not until I think we're near resolving the underlying problem. Kathy, uh, yeah, go ahead, Kathy, please. You can ask a question about the buy and hold. I was in the process of switching my thinking over to the 1,000 allotments. And sure. in that process, I found I had one too many yangs. I don't know if that's the right way to say it. Um, so I was just looking at whether I should sell it or just keep it because I already have it. <clears throat> and I wasn't quite sure on the two new positions we got into, which I think are their positions, what you're watching for? Same thing. I, I Unfortunately, I think you really have two options to, uh, to get to a bottom in the stock market. Either the virus has to go through enough humans that we have enough people not scared of it, that we this panic, this general panic uh, alleviates itself. Um, and I hate to say it, but that could be in the, if, if, if the governments really refuse to shut down the economy and try to push people back to work, uh, then I think that our signal that we're near a bottom is when the death count is in the mid, mid millions. That'll probably be peak panic. Um, so that's, I hate to say it, but that, that's what my calculations lead me to believe. Or it doesn't have to be that way. We don't need to have probably close to 10 million deaths before we hit a bottom. If, if we do a, a global synchronized shutdown and emerge with mass, that's really the, the two, that, that's the two cures. Either you let this rip through society as fast as possible and you end up with probably about 10 million deaths in the next 12 months uh, at a minimum, I'm afraid, at a bare bone minimum. Or you do a 60 day shutdown that's synchronized globally. It's important because if, if one country does it, 
doesn't matter because you have international trade. Some some jerk from across the globe is going to come over with it and restart the whole spread. Uh, so it's it's really a global synchronized shutdown followed by masks until there's a vaccine. And the vaccine is a is a long shot. We don't have a vaccine for HIV. That's killed 25 million people. We don't have a vaccine for SARS. The one they made, uh, the way it worked, it ended up having your immune system kill you when you, uh, when you got reinfected with it. So they gave the mouse the vaccine and it developed the antibodies. But then when you reintroduce SARS, the, uh, the, the, the antibodies just crippled the immune system on itself, killed the mice. So we don't have any reason to really truly believe that a vaccine is a guaranteed win at this point. And so yeah, that's that's kind of the two things I'm looking for to pick a bottom in the stock market. Uh, globally, Jerry, I think we'll have 1% of 7 billion is 70 million people. Okay, so cut that in half, cut it in a fourth, cut it in a tenth, whatever you want, but it's still millions of people. And that is a low ball, that's a low ball mortality rate, I'm afraid, is 1%. Which is horrifying that that's what it's come to. So. Uh, again, I don't think Trump's going to win if people are panicked. So he's going to have to shut down the economy and get some ventilators and masks made. I mean, it's just that simple. There's no, there's no other solution. And I, just got some, I just got some news I'm willing to uh, share. Okay, go ahead. Uh, this is a copy of a text message from an ER phys uh, physician down in Miami. Uh, he just received an order that is on, I guess, if he meant to say, if you're on a, a ventilator with confirmed COVID-19, must be DNR, do not resuscitate, because physicians should not perform uh, CPR. That's any patient. Uh there you go. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna get ugly here, but it doesn't have. That's that's the as scary as all this is. They're all gonna be brought to their knees. Every leader will quickly be brought to their knees, and they're gonna shut this shit down. And there's just no way around it. Yeah, and while you've been talking, uh, that uh, Kentucky representative, he's uh, called for a vote. So, um, they're all going back in. <laughs> Go figure. I'm thinking, wait, till, wait till all of uh, the House and the Senate are starting to drop over dead. Well, this is what I, this is exactly what my question was to the person who just sent this to me. I said, well, what's the point? Is he trying to get everybody sick so they just close the damn place down? I mean, you know, is that the purpose? Yeah. Jerry, I think you got... his point is to get rid of all the, the, is to point out or maybe get rid of all the bullshit that's been added in there, which is when you look at the bullshit that's been added, it's just amazingly ridiculous that it is. there's like something in there for a library. Oh my God, you're kidding me. Or performing arts center. What the hell does that have to do with coronavirus? Oh yeah. They're, and, well, that all, um, that all started with Pelosi. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he should, he should make thing. a press, he should do a press conference where he says, this is why I'm doing it. And then point out all this stuff and then let that make the news. And then I think the citizens in the U.S. will be going, what the hell? This Actually, I think it has. Um, there's a um, somebody just sent me an article from the New York Post that discusses exactly the, the reason why he's forcing a roll call. Um, I haven't pulled it up yet, but I got the link. Um, I'll have to see. It. I'll take a look at it. If it looks interesting, I'll stick it in the uh, box. Okay. I don't know if it's true, but NPR says they're not going to tell to cover Trump's press releases and they're mad because in, the bill has money for NPR and he's fighting it. <laughs> Everybody's got their hand out. So funny. 
oh, let's not save people. Let's uh, develop performing arts centers and libraries. Uh, yeah, and give NPR money. I mean, <laughs> right. why well, NPR are not all radio stations? Let's face it. Mnuchin got on this thing very quickly, and he wanted to make it a clean bill. And then the politics came into play, and we know the rest, right? Hell, they want to get a new deal involved. Yeah. At first. Hey, and, and uh, Jack, you, you typed a question into Karen. Uh, Karen, Jack wanted to know uh, what, what your source was uh, for the um, information on the, the surgeon. Or was it a surgeon or a guy in the ER? The guy in the ER, and I can't give that information out. I'm sorry. Okay. It's a copy of his text message. It's a friend of his from down there that he. Oh, yeah, that I wouldn't he, expect an individual. I thought it was maybe a news article. No, no. It's an individual whose buddy is in the ER down there in Miami. So it's a close contact, a friend of a friend. Somebody I, I trust very much as a, uh, as a source of information. Well, this is like a wartime. I mean, Trump has said it was wartime. And war it is. to do things that you don't do in normal times. Mm -hmm. Hey, Wait. the House just passed that. Bill. Right. Of the crime I Washington just got that time. alert. <laughs> yeah, there's not going to be that. <laughs> there's not going to be an in-person vote. It's done. It's off to Trump for signature now. Wow. Huh. Of course, now there's a bickering fight between uh, Trump and uh, and Kerry. <laughs> Twitter fight. Holy cow. Oh, you can't make this stuff up, guys. I just can't believe it. Yeah, I told my friend who has a manufacturing business and the natural gas that he should start pumping out ventilators so he can survive. Yeah, you are absolutely right. I mean, that's exactly what he should do is reconfigure. Yeah. Um, wait, I'm getting more. Uh, I wonder our patient's DNR today. Convert to DNR without signed. Next to well, I can't get enough people to work. That's my problem. I mean, I've got orders coming out of my ears. Yeah. But yeah, my husband's struggling too. Because we won't let him come to work if they have a temperature. Yeah. Well, cost of labor is going to go up. Well, maybe not because everybody's lost their job. <laughs> it just feels cool. Well, you know, and this is hurting a lot of industries, hotels, airlines, travel related stuff, cruises, and what have you. But a lot of industries in food, and we're in the pet industry, and we're going gangbusters. I bet. I bet. Yeah, my husband's been sending me stuff all day for the past several days uh, from the HR department with the Department of Labor, all these new posters they need to put up uh, informing, you know, employee employees of their rights of being able to take FMLA, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. He just sent me something else. They just updated stuff. I mean, this is just, a, you know, this is so unbelievably dynamic. It's such a shame because if they had gotten on this thing right away, it would have been so much easier to mitigate this mess. Ugh. Well, we didn't think we were going to be able to pay people because they shut down Pennsylvania, where that's right. where our payroll service is from. And so the government, the feds on one hand are saying you got to continue to pay people. And then they shut down your payroll companies. So how do you do it, that? Isn't we don't that interesting? Do annual checks anymore. <laughs> you and know, you we would, don't know how to do the taxes. <laughs> That's a whole, and that is an absolutely fascinating thing because I had this discussion as well with my husband because he has the same situation. His HR department is in a different state that he's in. Well, it, it doesn't even matter because both of them, but one is considered an essential service and the other is not. How do you, how do you not have HR as an essential service if you're supposed to get the uh, the, the payment to that? You're a hundred percent right. This is just outrageous. I would think oh, company payroll it. departments would be considered essential services, even if the company is not. Apparently not, but I think they're trying to appeal some of that. So I don't know. I haven't gotten all the facts on that yet. I'm, I'm kind of getting, you know, as he can send it to me, he does, because he knows I'm watching the markets. And uh, anything I hear, I'm feeding to him so he knows what the heck to do and what to tell the owner, uh, since he's a, he's, he's a, 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 a director of the company. But Gosh, it's just a mess. It's getting a little bit of a bid. Uh, okay, well, let me go through a few more screens here, and then we'll do some spreadsheet work, and then we'll uh, we'll meet back on Monday. How's that sound, everybody? 
Great, thanks. Sorry for the interruption. It was just all happening so quickly. I thought no, we should no, I, you guys are doing great. Let's see if we get a little bit of the stimulus. Really, it's it's positive for the. They'll, I'm sure they'll go pitch it to everybody. That's good for stock market, but really, that money is all going to have to be raised in the bond market. Not uh, okay. So let's. Uh, I think we all have the trade alerts. Um. Let me pull up. Let's just go through what I've earmarked on Twitter and then I'll look at uh, a couple spreadsheets and we'll wrap it up for today. Okay, so we got Trump uh, starting to freak out about ventilators. Uh, that's, you know, the so while we talk about mortality rate as, uh, or the, the total deaths as perhaps a good, a very unfortunate indicator to, to try to predict a bottom. Uh, one, two, if, if they do a synchronized global shutdown, I think that changes the game dramatically and, and will actually save money in the long run. Uh, but if they don't, it's not really the mor mortality that's going to cause economic crisis. It's the 15% of Americans who are going to need a ventilator uh, that's going to, to really an ICU bed. And so, you know, they're freaking out about trying to get 40,000 ventilators, but if we get, if they do let the economy go back to full throttle and don't do the, uh, some sort of extreme lockdown, the amount of people who are going to have respiratory failure in the next 12 months is going to be astronomical. Tens of millions of these ventilators are going to be needed. Um, so, uh, and, and worldwide, the amount of ventilators required is going to just be unfathomable. So uh, they're freaking about just trying to get a few thousand to New York at this point. Uh, nobody wants to go to work, just like Jack was saying. Uh, everybody's scared. Apparently in Amazon's warehouses, the virus is just spreading rapidly. Um, the market closes down three to 10% today. This would mean that the Wall Street Journal's shortest bear market in history was followed by a bull market that didn't even last half a trading session. So they're going to be trying to trick you into stocks all the way to the bottom while all the smart money buys the debt from the government. Okay, so Trump talked to Xi last night. Um, I, I don't know about what but they're just taunting us now about how poorly we're dealing with it and how well they've dealt with it as they now block their country. And I believe they'll soon just stop supplying goods. Americans start saving. This is all what happens when you crash an economy, you freak everybody out that they won't have income in the future. So they start saving and that causes a lot of problems for the economy. Canada dropped to zero. I think we'll start seeing people go to negative in short order. Uh, what's cool though, is there should be two tests out to the masses soon. One's to see if you have it, which is good for, they call it bottom up, uh, a bottom up strategy to deal with the, the virus, find who has it, isolate them, isolate anybody that they've been in contact with. That's one way to slow it down. The top down is just the general shutdown of, of everything which would absolutely work. Um, but the other test that we need to get is one which tells you if you've already had it, do you already have the antibodies? Because if those antibodies will last for say a year, now you know that you have a much lesser chance of becoming sick or infecting anyone else because you've already had it. Uh, so without a major mutation to the virus, which if we just collect samples worldwide, we can sit there and watch these little mutations uh, and know if there's a real risk re-emerging. Unlike Spanish flu, which we had very little technology to do that, uh, but the antibody test should be rolling out. That's gonna be a positive, positive thing for getting employers back to work. US Treasury, Munchen says 5% GDP at the end of the year, but it'll be all debt, so it's really, who cares what your GDP is if your 
debt, if your debt's increased at a faster pace than your GDP, then you're not making money, you're just borrowing money. Uh, so that's a funny little statement. Our debt to GDP could be something like 30% by the end of this year. So a 5% GDP print would be pathetic. China's industrial profits plunge. Uh, again, so Iran got hit really hard. I don't know if that would benefit China in some sort of scheme to take over their oil and not have to deal with such. I, I don't know the, the details on, on that relationship very well. I know that there is one. Uh, but Russia closed their border really early, really, really, really early and has had very, very little reported cases. Um, plus, they have no debt, and their bank's interest rate is extremely high, and they're going to tax money trying to outflow out of Russia. So they're trying to become a basically a safe haven uh, financial center to go park money at with super high interest rates and very little of capital outflows and they have no debt. And he has a speech talking about how the dollar's gonna, how America's weak because of their massive debts and the next crisis will teach us our lesson. Sure did. Uh, here's the hospital. All the hospitals are just gonna get over, overfilled with High risk patients. Uh, oil, this continues to get worse and worse. And again, this I believe is being done by design and as part of a coordinated attack. Uh, Tyler, yep, you got it. That's correct with the silver play. Sweden, a lot of people are still in denial. They just don't want to believe this is happening and they don't want to shut down. Uh, but I'm afraid uh, as soon as people start dying, um, especially well-known people, that tone of voice uh, goes right out the window quite quickly. Prime Minister has it, Boris Johnson. Uh, I got to look into this because I'm curious as to how the Fed can buy ETFs and corporation corporate bonds when they do not have the legal authority. Answer, the Fed and Treasury merged. Meet your new Fed chairman, Donald J. Trump. I explained my latest column. So that was one. They have like five facilities, all with different acronyms. And everyone's joking. The more acronyms they get, the worse the situation is. But they basically have a, a loaning facility set up for every major institution outside of buying stocks directly. And I think if the stock market crashes far enough, uh, they would capitulate and do that. But they want it to be at such a low valuation that it wouldn't affect the balance sheet too negatively. Because at the end of the day, uh, how do we strike back? How do we create financial destruction? I think first we're going to cut rates to super low rate uh, levels, print out the gazoo, flood the market, devalue the dollar, uh, flood the government with money to try to plug all the holes in the ship, reemerge, and then they're going to hike interest rates. And when the Fed hikes interest rates and then vacuums dollars out of the economy, it has the effect of crushing everything under the sun. So I think that is the single most powerful move America could take if it did want to punish uh, the rest of the world. Uh, so we'll see if that happens. But right now, I think the most likely is, again, cutting those interest rates, printing money. Okay, so Twitter continues to let Chinese propaganda say whatever they want in our media uh, while China blocks all of the citizens to have an account and of course, doesn't even allow any of our journalists uh, to even live in China, much less uh, be part of their media. Don't you feel embarrassed talking about testing? The US just tested 300,000 people by March 24th, while China has tested millions. 
at least 10 times that of the US or more. Your bragging needs treatment. Jim Bianco, we are nationalizing the markets and exploding the size of the government. Who better than Lenin to explain what is happening? There are decades when nothing happens and there are weeks where decades happen. I love that saying. And that's certainly, what is it? February, we're at all time highs. So here we're starting to see some of that geopolitical tension that we're anticipating. Senior officials in Trump administration agreed to new measures to restrict the global supply of chips to Huawei. Foreign companies that are US chip maker, chip making equipment would be required to obtain US license. So Huawei is gonna be a key target uh, for America to take down in the next couple of years. So I think that will be one piece of news to monitored closely. And that is uh, really, in general, what this big trade war is about is Huawei and it being financed by the total power of China and giving it a much, a really, truly unfair advantage against the rest of the world. Um, and it, it leads to a good argument. If China wants to operate that way, do they have that right? Uh, and if so, how does that affect the relationship with the United States? It, it looks like she is ready to decouple with the United States uh, back in May before he signed this trade deal, which I didn't think he would sign. He said, now we begin the long march. We must rebuild everything from the beginning. And so that would insinuate that uh, they think they're better off without the United States and to use their core advantage, which is again to get everybody to work for cheap. I think it's like 350 an hour to work for Foxconn to build iPhones and you have a 70% tax rate. So the communist party just sucks all the wealth out of the country and then they focus it into industries that they believe they can uh, dominate and make highly profitable. Uh, so Huawei is really critical to track to predict what's gonna happen between these two nations and how that'll play out in markets. Uh, China ministry to suspend entry of foreigners. How funny, boomerang. First we're blocking Chinese, now they're blocking us. Just finished a very good conversation with President Xi of China discussing great deal, the corona, which is ravaging large parts of our planet. China has been through much and has developed a strong understanding of the blank. We are working closely together, much respect. Ah, I thought we were only true. I, I think that tone's gonna change by election. Um, so we'll see. Treasury bill yields further negative. Investors are willing to pay over par, so negative yield, why? because uh, they all know what's coming. Guaranteed payday for banks, buy up government debt, hold it, put it in repo if you want some cash in the meanwhile, and then sell it back to the Fed via their QE vacuum. And you walk away with a low risk, high return. That's why we're so excited about being invested in the bond market. My only thing holding me back from getting more aggressive is that I do know there's a huge, huge, huge we're talking a 10 to 20 time increase in assets under management and what will be uh, on the supply side of that TLT. So is that gonna have a negative impact on yields in the short term or are they gonna just hold, hold it steady from here and start to slowly grind it lower? We'll see, that's why I'm being a little precautious right at this very moment because they haven't even started really slinging that debt. Uh, and now the Fed's partnered with BlackRock to manage uh, the buying and selling of these different assets, which is quite funny. Um, BlackRock controls a huge chunk of the equities market. Huge, 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 over half, well over half. Uh, CEO of the world's largest asset manager thinks you should buy stocks now. Intriguing. BlackRock's Larry Fink says now is the time to get back into equities. Uh, 
Now, China and Russia are trying to look like heroes coming to help everybody. Jeffrey Gunlack to contrast to now versus World War II could not be more stark. World War II, huge sacrifice, huge tax increase now, huge non-sacrifice, huge tax relief, politicians justifying support of this horrific bailout invoking World War II should be disqualified. So again, we're gonna keep lowering rates and printing money and diluting debt uh, until we have runaway inflation. And then they'll have the excuse to jack up those interest rates and crash every asset on the planet. Uh, this is the Chinese propaganda arm. Barry's saying, what does a total shutdown look like to the average citizen? I'm gonna post a really good diary of someone who just went through all this. It was a great read. I if I can find it. This guy hated the shutdown. He still doesn't know if it was a real threat or not. Uh, didn't wanna wear a mask. I, he's a translator by job. I don't know how his story managed to hit, but it was great. It was a great read. Uh, he talks about how he's eating a lot and he could only make it to 3.30 most days because he was drinking so much, he became intoxicated. The local government officials were trying to track him down and his dogs because they weren't wearing masks. Um, but it was a great diary. Uh, Jack says LQD. So that's being backstopped by the Fed. So I think that'll probably just trade flat for where it is. Um, and unfortunately, I don't think that's even, so even an unlimited amount of capital going to the corporations through that, essentially, I think it's just, a, a, it's like a little escape route for the CEOs to, to dump stocks to their own corporation. Let's see if I can find this. If not, I'll get you guys. Yeah, this diary was really good though. I love that picture of that spring break food. He was a moron, and now their little uh, caricature oh, picture of makes him look yeah. like more of a moron. <laughs> yeah, this guy was licking a toilet saying, you know, coronavirus or precaution or something. And now he's got it, and he's, his face is all inflamed, and he looks like he's on his. Yeah, this diary was excellent. I really enjoyed it. Um, See if I can find it really fast. Here it is. This this was really well done. You'll laugh really hard if you give us a, a good read, guys. So yeah, if you're interested in what a, a shutdown might look like right there and, and that, the, the guy still can't get out of his village so he's in a little village a ways off from the epicenter um, and slowly but surely watch this all unfold got trapped in his his little village and has all these crazy stories of interacting with the different government officials or trying to chase him down for not wearing masks threatening to kill his dog you know he just didn't want to be stuck in his house. He didn't want to wear a mask. He didn't want any of this. Um, and he's a great writer. So I definitely recommend reading this little, this little blog. It takes you through the roller coaster of emotions that he had and that I think uh, the general population is going to have as they slowly cope with this reality that this is something like an invisible atomic bomb that's covering the entire earth, slowly growing, and there's nothing we can do about it. We're completely helpless. And, and what's funny is most of us are going to have a minor cold from it. Most of us are going to have very little effect. It's just that 10 to 20% whose lungs fail to breathe and you suffocate and you end up having to go to the hospital. That's, that's the scary part. And that's why we have to do this, this lockdown. 
Okay, so the US quickly became the country with the largest number of infected cases, indicating that many people will die later. It is unfortunate Trump government failed to draw lessons from other countries. So it's again, it's pointless to do a shutdown if you don't reemerge with masks. And it looks like the supplies to make those have been, and there's not a lot of content out there about trying to track down why in the hell don't we have masks? Here's the Fed's balance sheet just rocketing up over 5 trillion now. Yeah, you're slowly seeing different people in the, in the government point the blame to China. So the bottom line is China had doctors warning everybody about this in December, maybe as early as November, but it was well circulated in December, right when they're signing this trade deal. They didn't tell anybody. In January, they go on to throw these huge festivals right in the epicenter. So free food, the whole public, it's almost as if they wanted the populace to get highly infected. And exactly right during the time frame where they know it's the number one highest traffic inflow in and out of China for the Chinese New Year. So they wait till the very last second till the holiday began to tell everybody, oh, better wear some masks and isolate and then uh, the rest is history. But yeah, I mean, they, they let this get out of control. They withheld information. And so I do believe we'll be pointing the finger at them, rightfully so and um, retaliating in the near future. So that is why I really like uh, the, the, and we'll have to see what, how exactly are they gonna, you know, are they gonna literally fly some fighter jets and blow the crap out? No, probably not, but financial attacks, certainly, and that's the, but this, you know, if, if we can prove that they did this to kill people, I mean, I don't know. So I, I like ITA a lot. Yeah, the mass would come from China, Victor points out. Yeah, so they totally cut us off of the mass. They said they needed them and cut us off of that. So yeah, the decoupling, I believe, is what's the whole point of all this. Our great oil and gas industry is under siege. So I agree. And I think that um, so in our commodities, metals, I have a nice spot for us to pick up. Uh, the companies that survive, I think most of these companies are gonna go out of business. They're gonna have to consolidate. Um, so this will be probably part of the group. So um, these two companies will be part of the companies getting bailouts, but they're not allowed to buy back their own stocks. So we might be able to get these companies for pennies on the dollar. Um, and over here in this category, like Boeing, for example, is gonna get a bailout, and not be able to buy back stocks. So I think those two, we might get this most value play out of once this bottom really comes in. These ones I expect to drop less, but still go down with the general market and then benefit wildly on the rebound because they'll have so much uh, growth they'll have profit growth and revenue growth at a faster pace than they've ever had in their history. Uh, so this one will be a value play. This will be a growth play for us. And then over here, uh, again, I think these are gonna be, if we wait, I, I still think it's gonna get much worse than it is yet now. I think you can get these for significantly less uh, than they're worth in the long run. You don't make the timeline, the virus makes the timeline, Dr. Fossey, and that is so true. Quoth the Raven, CNBC is going to have you believe that things are back to normal because the market is up. The market is completely detached from reality. Things are not better. Unemployment is surging. Our underlying economy doesn't exist. And the Fed is destroying the US dollar. Turn off your TV. Nothing epitomizes America as much as stocks soaring on a record day for jobless claims. 
This isn't stimulus. It's a big plug for the financial system and a little morsel for citizens to patch over what's happening. If this lasts longer than a few weeks, the money is wasted. There are 128 million households in America. You could give them all $10,000 for 1.3 trillion. Talk about that stimulus, wasting most of the money. There's so many absurd organizations getting money from this. It's just so it makes, it made me sick to my stomach to read the little bits we have of the bill and who's getting paid from it. Kumo approves splitting ventilators. Ugh. Paul Tudor Jones, market to retest lows before summer rebound after COVID-19 throws its best punch. Yeah, I, um, I think it's a mistake to think the summer is going to do anything. The shutdown and re-emerging with masks will kick this thing's ass, 100%. But it has to happen globally. And I believe we may see a new temporary global government developed, a new temporary global currency, which they've already designed, tested, called the SDR, rolled out to provide free money to everybody. Um, as we crush the dollars. That's some of the conspiracies out there that would probably be required to pull off something like a synchronized global shutoff. Uh, otherwise, if we all stick to our, our own rules and everybody does their own thing, we're gonna continue to have chaos. We're gonna continue to have to have contagion spreading in random parts of the world. Um, and we're gonna get to tens of millions on the death line before enough people will have the immunity uh, that the workforce can get back. And I think we'll be near a bottom. Yields on US T bills are only going more negative. With the cost to park your money in the US debt for three months reaching 0 0.08. What a time, negative yielding US debt products. I called it before it happened. Kathy Griffin hospitalized with unbearably painful symptoms, blames Trump. Uh, Mutants, Munchen says US will sell 30 bond, 30 year bond. I guess every technical issue is getting the 50 and century bonds designed. Uh, so this is our single biggest risk is that we know there's a ton of money that's going to be dumped into this uh, specific product that we trade. Um, but I don't think that money is going to be punished. So we got to carefully wait to see how fast they're going to unload it and if it's going to bump the yield up higher at first. But I highly doubt that the people buying this are going to be losing money in doing so. Um, because it's critical. This, if this stimulus doesn't happen, the government's not funded and we have complete chaos. And plus, again, this is the market the Fed absolutely manipulates to their partners in crime's favor. The VIX closed at 61 today. It's ninth consecutive close above 60. That's never happened before. The prior record was eight straight above 60. Uh, leading into the 2008 crash or towards the bottom of it uh, before the QE rolled in. Uh, someone jokes, we should have bad unemployment numbers more often. England Deputy Chief Medical Officer says it would not be implausible to see some degree of lockdown measures for six months. So it's really the option is you do these half measured Jack 10 says, should we not hold cash now? No, I, I, we have a huge cash position to buy stocks once they crash 50, 75%. China hasn't shut the door completely, but left a crack. China now records dozens of imported infection cases every day. The latest decision shows the Chinese government is determined to prevent a second wave of outbreak. I believe China can make it. 
the U.S. government has, this will be my last Twitter quote, and we'll jump over to, uh, to work on some spreadsheets to close out today. U.S. government has made three mistakes. One, slow response, which led to the U.S. likely becoming the new epicenter. Two, not assuming responsibility as a superpower, giving no substantial aid to allies, such as Italy and Spain, which Russia and China now are doing. Three, undermining global solidarity. Okay. So unfortunately, I think it gets worse before it gets better at this point, folks. And look, just, just since we're hitting refresh here, it just jumped 1,500 deaths. Okay, so let me pull up some spreadsheets. We'll go for, I'll go for another hour and then we'll wrap it up. See, Tyler G, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, here great. Me. Yes, sir. Okay, we're pulling up your spreadsheet. Okay, so let's see if we got, you got your deposit, good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move these. So when I first designed this, I had envisioned our clients having a pretty complex portfolio, kind of like the, the, the toy shop as a kid. Oh, we wanna get all the, it, what we come to realize is a more simplified portfolio is much easier for everybody to follow. Um, so I had this system so we could be managing a, a set of products, um, which would probably be better for like a, a serious, Fifty hundred million dollar hedge fund manager. So what I like to do is just put these straight into the close box. So I'm gonna do that for you. And what I like to do is put my prices in there. Um, each day. Now this, hopefully by next Thursday, you'll be able to just put the contract code right here and it will automatically flow the price. So I'm waiting on a couple fills because I got to get the um, funding, but I pre-populated, you know, the um, underlying equity and then the um, expiration date. I just did not put in the option strike price, or okay. not the strike price, but the, um, the option price that I got. That way I, it kind of reminds me to uh, still gonna fill those in and wait for those. So okay. do you recommend I do that or just wait until I actually get them closed out? Yeah, uh, yeah you can place the trades in there whenever you, whenever you like. So, so yeah, I, I would just update this every so often whenever you're curious with the current price. And then you can see what your open profit loss losses. And I'm just, I'm just keeping track what's open and closed here. So that'll just save you a little time on that front. Okay. Um, okay so yeah. So just always put them in that, like you're saying, you recommend putting them in the closed and then just updating the, the price once we're finished with it. Yeah. Yep. And so the second I put the trade in, I immediately say I sold it for the same price I bought it. So it doesn't think I lost a bunch of money. Nice. And, uh, and, then every so, and then every day what I do is I update the sell price with the open price. So I know how I'm faring so far. Okay, so that's good. We're gonna move this trade to different tab to the bond market. Oh yeah, I just realized. Just now, as I enter those other ones, so we got to put them in separate tabs. No problem. We'll probably switch our deposit to maybe 30 for this one. And then we want to start our, our uh, starting balance is going to be 30. And we hit so right equals. Now I'm working with, right now, I'm working with 75. Sure. I think you'll see what I'm doing here in a second. So I put. Okay. 
30,000 in your US equity fund. And then I punch that in as your starting balance for March. And then I punched in equals B1. So next week, we're gonna have to close this out and then put the new starting balance. So we have to roll this, this starting balance in balance to create the profit loss each, each period. Oh, I see, okay. Okay, so now we'll go to the bond portfolio and we'll deposit. Thirty K, and then we'll go set up our starting balance. That equals B one, so we can see your return one point four at least on your TLT so far. Um, okay, so let's see now. Looks like you, you got a good start. Now we're gonna put seventy five hundred in here. Start this bad boy at 7,500 equals B1. So now, when you get some gold going, put that trade here. And then we're going to need 7,500 here. And let's start that balance equals B1. Again, at the end of the month, what I'll do is I'll be like, okay, well, we closed out at 75.25. Then we're going to start again at 75.25. And then I have to roll it over to uh, show the real value there again. And it's going to calculate your PL per month. See how that works? Yeah. And um, the one uh, equity we're looking at is the SLV. Okay, so I'm keeping my bonus trades in the same asset class. Um, so uh, the QQQ, I, well, I have it right now in the pro TLT tab, but I would, if I were you, I'd put my QQQ in the US equities position and I put my silver trade. You made to punch that one in? Sure. Okay. Yeah, he doesn't have that, Jason. He just started it yesterday, but. Okay. You have, you don't have yet? But it helps me to know where I need to be. Okay, well, we could punch it in. So you put in the date here. And then it was, uh, what was it? January 22. Whatever, dollar 85. And if we wanted to have, what's it trading at right now? About buck 75 or? Um, So you, you buy about four or so. Oh, yeah, emerging markets, we're kind of just sitting there in cash. Um, might give you guys a put in the near future on FXI. So if, if we can get FXI to zero because US gets crazy and outlaws Chinese investment altogether, then we'll get the strike price and just lose the premium. So that would be really nice. Um, that'd be the maximum return you could possibly get on a put option. Okay, great. Well, I think that's a pretty good start in your spreadsheet. Nice, Jason. That was uh, really cool to walk through that live. Very cool. Yeah, it's not too bad once you see how it, how easy it is, huh? Yeah, nice. Let's see. Let's get Jack. Can you send me Jack Tan's sheet, Ryan? Hey, uh, Jason, do you want to uh, – we have about 10 to 20 people on our trials. Do you want to just cover the options they have real quick? Oh, sure. Yes, yeah, so we have a handful of products here, guys.
Okay, so we have four products. We have the buy and hold portfolio. You get an update every Monday. And again, if you upgrade to a higher level of a program, you still get everything underneath it. That's something that people don't always get. So if you buy the uh, basic portfolio, you also get the buy and hold. If you buy the pro, you're basically getting everything beneath it as well. So buy and hold portfolio uses no options. And it simply uses a ETFs based portfolio to have exposure to, to everything we're doing in our pro system. So it's a really a beautiful hands-free, easy system to follow that's ideal for accounts under 30K. Uh, the basic portfolio adds options. Times like these, it's nice to have options. You get leverage, you get low risk, you get opportunities to make these 1,000%, 10,000% returns. So uh, when there's big moves in the market, you really want to have access to options. Our basic portfolio meets Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It gives you a portfolio that only trades US equities. So a lot of opportunity there, especially if we get a big crash and then can buy assets cheap, uh, really some tremendous opportunities in the US equity market coming up. Timing will be important, obviously. Our pro portfolio does add in the bond market, the precious metals market, and shorting China in every way, shape, or form, which I think will be potentially a big opportunity in the next year or two. Um, that's ideal for accounts with over 75,000. And that's really what it costs to build the foundation of our, of our system. So you have uh, lots of 100 shares of TLT, you have lots of 100 shares of the SPY normally, but we do have some different ETFs we're looking at. And uh, GDX, we have lots of 100 because we're doing a married put. So everything's super protected. The pro program's biggest selling point isn't the total return. It's the extremely low volatility. It's had very, very, very small amounts of drawdown and consistently generated profits. And then finally, we have the boot camp. Uh, that meets every Tuesday and Thursday, has bonus trades. And if you do go directly into the boot camp, you get a free year of the pro program. So that's our four core offers there. Thanks, Jason. And uh, can you post it in the, uh, the group chat too? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, bud. And if any of you all have any questions kind of, uh, you know, on, on the portfolios, uh, if you just want to uh, call me and, and ask a couple questions before you sign up, please feel free to do so as well, guys. Uh, my number is 505-322-7515. Uh, yeah, Vored, uh, yes, uh, if you do the basic portfolio, you will get a free month of uh, boot camp. That is correct. Yep. And so the boot camp's really your education you need to, to know what the hell's going on here. So we give everybody, no matter which advisory you buy, 30 days so you can go in there and devour all the modules. And at least in 30 days, you can you can tell yourself, okay, I've, I've learned so much. I get what's going on. I can really understand the advisory. And then you can decide later if you want to to be a lifetime member in the in the boot camp because that's every Tuesday Thursday you get content uh, for lifetime in that package. Yeah, our pleasure, Vored. And uh, you know we don't know how long we'll be able to offer the free seat in the boot camp, uh, but while we have the spaces, we'll absolutely be happy to give you guys that uh, that bonus. Okay. Hey Jack, um, great question, bud. I'll post you the the link um, to to the bootcamp content. Okay, I'll post it to you directly. Yeah, Jack. So every email we send out for the bootcamp has all the links at the footer to all the previous modules. And um, 
We're also close to rolling out a username password system so you can easily log in and go through all the content. Uh, so I'll make sure you get, get that. But yeah, every Tuesday, Thursday, you get an email and every, each of those emails has a list of all the good modules to go back and absorb. Okay, Tony um, says, I entered all the TLT option buys into the spreadsheet. I screwed up and put them in the equities page. Could you move them and show me how without messing up the formula? Sure. Uh, Ryan, could you grab me Tony's uh, spreadsheet link and I'll put it up there and also Jack Tan's. Hey, Jason, uh, I think Zoom's having a little glitch. I can't send uh, Jack directly his link to the bootcamp. Um, can you just uh, copy and paste that to him real quick? Sorry, bud. I don't know why, but it's not letting me do, shoot it to just him and not everyone else. Uh, yeah, I'll just have to have, have Ryan forward. I don't have a way to do that either. Okay, got it. Oh, but yeah, nice. Ryan's email. already did it. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, Tom Sharp, go ahead. Good morning. I've got, what is your best estimate of where mortgage rates are going to be? Are they going to be going up or down one week, two weeks, and one month from today? I would bet they're going down for the next year. Okay. But that's not my expertise, so... Um, no, I, do, I asked for your best guess. Yeah. So I think the Fed, let me re, rephrase. I think the federal fund rate, uh, yeah, I think they're going way lower, way lower for a lot of this correlates to when we can cure the underlying problem in our economy. So the longer they uh, screw around with half measures, the longer this pain happens to the economy in general. The sooner we, we can get everybody to, to take the proper precaution, the sooner things can be alleviated. Uh, so I, I would bet that rates go down. And Thanks. also, unfortunately, I think real estate prices are going to potentially crash uh, the longer this goes on, which I didn't think at first. But if you have high unemployment and uh, reduced economic output, then it doesn't matter how low rates go. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I have something to add to that that I heard this morning. I saw somebody, um, a friend. Oh, by the way, my battery is uh, coming back. <laughs> Sorry, I, I dropped off for a while. Um, a friend had tried to refinance uh, just the last couple of days with um, Chase and uh, Wells Fargo, I'm trying to remember who else, and they are not doing it right now. I suspect because they have no idea how to evaluate um, not only, as you're saying, if the property prices go down, but um, how, if people don't have income right now, um, having done a transaction less than a year ago, um, they're looking only at income and they don't really care what your net worth is on borrowing. Um, so I think they don't know what to do and they're going to wait. So keep that in mind. Jeez. That's the banks telling you that there's a stock crash coming. Holy moly. All right. Well, <laughs> they don't people... care about your net worth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, they don't. Well, right. no, no. But this past year, seriously, they were not interested. Their, their formulas, they don't use net worth anymore at all for, for borrowing. When it comes to a mortgage, it's strictly your income. That was really all they wanted to know. I'm shocked, but you know, because I don't, you know, I'm retired and I have this teeny little pension, whatever's left, which may disappear. So we had to use exclusively my husband's and I thought, but, 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 and they went, well, it doesn't matter. That's just how the formula works. And that's what I'm saying. They'll have to recalculate how they're going to approve new or refinances. So hmm. brace yourselves. Low, low. I, I was waiting for them to pay me with negative rates. <laughs> you know? Beach front, beachfront, Florida. Here I come. 
come on down. Well, not, right. <laughs> not now. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm trying to find Jack. Uh, Jack, let's see. You sent me an email, but with no uh, no trades in it yesterday. I just said, hi, Jason, please review my position, but there's no positions. No, I sent you a, a spreadsheet, but I don't know how to use your um, your spreadsheet here. So I spent, sent my, my, my position on, my sp on a spreadsheet that I made. Okay, I didn't get it. Send it again. Okay. To support. Uh, to um, okay, send it to support. Yeah. Yep. Portfolio. Port, yep. Support at portfoliobuilder.io. What is it? Support. Yeah. Uh, Portfolio.io. Okay, I got it. Yep. Yeah, and a lot of people, guys, uh, wonder what the IO it stands. For. It it's short for input output. We're kind of technology darks. Had some questions on that, so I figured I would just touch on that while we were talking about it. Just send it. Okay, let's see. Hey, Jason, I'm going to hop off for a few minutes. I'll be right back. Okay, bud? Okay, sure. Okay, hold on, guys. I'm just waiting for some links. Okay, so yeah, I'm just waiting for uh, two spreadsheets. We're gonna get Tony and Jack's spreadsheets. We'll get some work on it. And then I'm gonna have to do a hard uh, close probably in about 35 minutes. We'll see how far we can get on both. Let's see who we got here. Okay, here's Jax. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. How much capital do you want me to deposit into your US equities position? 30? Okay. Is that what you want to start? Okay, I don't know. Um, I don't know how that works, basically. Well, okay. How much are you, is your intention to follow the full system? To yes. The okay. With yes, I, I think three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand. Okay, so we need to put forty percent of that in this tab. So let me just calculate that. You said three hundred thousand. Yeah. Okay, so we'll put 75,000 here. Okay, so that'll be your starting balance. Same thing for the bond portfolio. Do 
Oh, sorry. Punch on the wrong numbers here. So we're going to do 120,000. And then we'll put 30,000 into both of these. Okay, so that's step one. Now let's see what we got. Um, so we got some trades we want to put in there. So let's look at these uh, spy trades to start. Put these, put these in. Now, if I hit Control Shift F, you notice. Look at so if I go. So I'm putting these in the opposite order you have because I like to keep things chronological. See how it ruined my colors? So if I do control shift copy. Oops. Control shift V will only paste the text. Buy price. Now, every so often, you might want to update that to be the real time, but for now, we'll just put it as a flat return and number of contracts. You don't have the contract, so you put. Units. So I guess is that maybe seven, four, two? You there, Jack? Is this supposed to be divided by a hundred? Is that what you have? Okay, so there you go. Um, let's see if there's any TLT. Let's do an equity trade for another example. Then I'll let you try to figure out a little on your own so that. You have a learning experience. So I'll put in one trade for you on the long equity side. I'm not putting in dates. You could add that. We bought 265 shares at 164.64. Put buy if you want. All right. So there's some open positions for you. And I'm gonna let you try to work the rest of these in there. Now, it's not designed to put random stocks in there. Um, you've got a little bit of FAS in there, it's kind of, so I'd throw that in your US equities position. Uh, GDX, obviously, would go in your precious metals. Gold would go in your precious metals. ARC, Bison, FL uh, won't fit. Tex would go in your US equities. These go in your bond position. Tesla, I put my equities tab. Yeah, Yang, I'd put in the emerging market tab. And you're off to off to the horse races. So let's see where you're at come Monday. Okay, Jack. I'm gonna let you go ahead and work on that from there. Okay, now I'm gonna pull up.
Tony's. Let's see. Yeah, Jason, that doesn't look like it. It's titled uh, 327 2020 at 1202 p.m. Okay. Okay, so you're probably still working on your last spreadsheet. Yeah. Okay. I've been copying and then updating them and renaming them. Hmm. Do you want to? Should, uh, should, should I share it? Is that what I didn't do? Yeah, so the way the software works is I create a file uh, from this email account and then share it to you and then you work on that. And then it allows me to access your sheet and, and help you. Uh, but if you do copy it and clone it, now it may be hosted in your drive and not mine. But yeah, if you want to send me a link. Okay, what address? Uh, support at portfoliobuilder.io. Portfolio Builder. Yeah. Send the link. Link was sent. Did you get it? Uh, not yet. Waiting for it though. <clears throat> did you share it or did you just email a link or what? I shared it when I when I selected is share it. It said uh, what email address, and I put the email address and sent it. Okay, waiting for it to come in here. <clears throat> Still, I'm gonna shoot you an email. How about you just reply to that with the link? Okay, we'll I just copied works. the link. Um. Waiting for the email. Uh, oh, well, what email are, are you using? So I sent it to your Tony C at. At Tony C, yeah. At colonfam.com. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll uh, go ahead and create one while I'm waiting. <clears throat> Or you could paste it in this chat box uh, would be fine too if you want. Just only yeah, do I don't. panel. Just do it to the panelists and it'll just go to me. Um. Yeah, but I'm on the phone here. Oh, okay. No worries. Uh, to support this at portfolio B U E R. It's portfolio builder, not builders, correct? Right. 
Message cannot be sent to the following recipient. <laughs> Mailbox unavailable. Ah, shoot. Miss Bell. Is this your spreadsheet right here? Uh, no. No. That's the older one. <clears throat> okay. I, so I, I, just... I, I am going to recommend that you use the new, like, don't copy and change the, because the one we send you is the one I can easily find and support. Okay. So this is your new one right here. But it's fine. We'll, once we get your other one, we'll, I'll move your trades to the new one. Okay, I just sent you the email with the link. Okay, got it. Okay, does this look right? Yes. Okay, great. So I'm going to move you, well, whatever, we could use this one. Okay, I'm sending a request to edit from my uh, other email account, actually, if you want to approve that. That comes in on email? It should pop up in your email, yeah, or your spreadsheet for uh, request to edit. I have so many things open. Right. Um, and now, somehow, my spreadsheet sheet disappeared. Okay, let's see. Come on. Yep. Uh, nope. And I'm on the spreadsheet, doesn't say anything. And in the email, I don't have an email. Uh, try opening the spreadsheet because I can't edit it right now. It says view only. So I've sent a request and you have to approve that. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for the request. Anonymous Coyote, is that you? No. I think that's a support uh, person's, that's my support email on it. Bo both of them can't edit this doc. Is there any way for me to select it to, to allow you to edit? Or allow anybody to edit? Yeah, if you go to share. Uh-huh. Then... Yeah, you should see that I'm one of the, well, yeah, you'd have to type in. You'd have to put it as an edit. I'm sorry, I just, uh, did you say something? I, I yeah, saw you, the share. You have to hit the share button and then yeah. type in portfolio at portfoliobuilder.io. And then you're going to have to select not the view, but the edit button. Okay. Oh boy, we've got all kinds of trades. I'm sorry, portfolio builder at port at. Portfolio at portfolio builder.io. Okay. Uh, portfolio at portfolio. Uh, 
and it can edit. Send. Did you get it? Let's see. Bingo. All right. Great. Okay. Sorry for the delay. Oh, no worries. Uh, OK, so let's see. So I to... gathered from the other conversations that I wasn't supposed to put all the other stock in there. But yes. I have. A... Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, it's only going to recognize these ETFs. Um, Okay. Now you can edit these. So Jack could actually go put his Tesla and replace one of these tickers and it would, it would calculate it. Okay. But, um, but then you wouldn't be able to follow the other ETFs right. later, later on. Right. So maybe I can uh, copy the sheet and then put a different title on it and do others. I haven't done a spreadsheet in 15 years. Yeah, it's good old times, isn't it? Yeah, this is just a glorified color-coded calculator. It's nothing too crazy. A little programming to pick up the prices and all that, but yeah. uh, okay, so I've moved some trades. These you might want to put somewhere else. Now, what are we total? Uh, we're doing the pro system, right? Say again? What's the total you want me to because uh, I need All to right, move. So it's 150,000 is what I'm working on. Okay. And you're going to do the full system down to the T? Yeah. Okay. So uh, the deposits have to be a little different in each tab. So 150 times 40. So we're going to put 60 in here. And we'll come do our start balance. equals B1. And then this should get fixed as we put some, some trades. Oh yeah, because see it's not recognizing all this. Now, could you take those stock trades, just move them to a different sheet, a blank sheet? Yeah, I can maybe just put them like right here. And by the way, right there at stock trades, when you say buy, sell, is that recognizing it as a buy or sell or is it just Text. No, the negative. So you have to do the negative. That's just text. Oh, I got to do the negative. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we got your 60K. Good. Um, okay, let's put in our deposit in the bonds. Yeah, I put the bonds in the equities. That's okay. You guys are starting to see how yeah, easy this is. Yeah, I'm, I'm following you now. It's, easy. it's kind of like learning a card game. You can, If you listen to the instructions, you'll, you're like, what the hell's going on? But you just play the game. Right. And it's like, oh, okay, that, that's easy. In this in this equities list or ETF list, I don't see TLT. Yeah, it's on the bond tab. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, that's So I did put all the options in the right spot, correct? Uh, well, let's put these ones over on the other guy. Now, cut doesn't work on this one, so I have to copy, paste, come back, and delete, okay? Okay. Cut doesn't work. It, it makes it ugly. It just uh, it screws up everything, so just don't do it. So uh, do the formulas, the formulas go with it? When you cut yeah. Yep. Yeah, it'll screw it up. 
So I'm gonna come back and delete these ones that were moving over. And then control shift F, watch what happens if I just paste, well, cause it's the same color, it didn't matter. I, uh, it, it's not gonna be like, that. I can go back and revert, you know, it, unfortunately it's easy to screw up the formulas on this a little bit. I know that. So you gotta be a little careful with what you're cutting and pasting cause. Uh, yeah, that's why I'm squeamish about it. It's a little fragile from that standpoint, yeah. But it does the job beautifully once you get uh, once you get used to it. Somebody likes the silver trade, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I took ten of them and I just watched them. Uh, you know, price changes. And bought them. That's more. Again, like, on the on the option side, the call and the put doesn't do anything. It's just text. Correct. Okay. Okay, that's all straightened out. Um, okay, so, so that see. silver, you put it in metals, right? Yep. Okay. Okay, we got our bond buying. And GDX goes in metals. Yeah, you got a GDX purchase here? Yeah. How many uh, GDX you got? Uh, GDX, uh, hold on. GDX, GDX was, oops, it's gone. Okay, GDX is 400 at $20.64. Okay, so we're at 320. So the only let's see. eighty two hundred. Oh, I put this in the wrong tab. Sorry. Twenty dollars sixty four cents four hundred. Oh, we already got it there. Okay, good. Okay. So you're doing well in this portfolio. Uh, flat in this one. You're gonna be down in the equities a little bit. Probably more than that. And uh, emerging markets is ready to uh, to get to work. So yeah, that. and I still have to buy more GDX and more TLT to to satisfy it. Correct? Uh, you got two hundred. So I'm supposed to have four. Yep. So trailer tells you you're short 166 roundup in this case to follow me. So you go up to 400 on that. So you're gonna be putting in 200 order here soon. And then, yep. uh, and then this one will go up to 800. And yeah, you're on track. Very good. So where, where does it say, cause I can't see it on mine now, but where does it say that I have to buy this? Where does it alert? It, it's supposed to alert me, right? It's a calculator, so yeah, it's not popping yeah. up any uh, messages, but it, it, it is calculating that, yeah. That Just says negative something somewhere? It says trade alert, 166 shares of TLT to hit your uh, target. So we told that we want 100% allocation to bonds and that we have 60,000 to put into bonds. Right. And so we're actually going a little bit over 100% to get there. So if we put that in now, let's see how overweight we are. What are we at? 165.32. So now it says, oh, you have 109% allocation of what our target is, which is exactly correct. As soon as you get that order in. Okay. Yeah, it's a neat little calculator. It's yeah, once, I you, think it once, is. You, once you see it doing its job and how easy it is. Um, Let me see where we're at with TLT. So, 
So if I couldn't buy the uh, TLT for one reason or another, would I just beef up the calls on, on the, uh, the option calls that you dictated, uh, suggested? No, I wouldn't do anything I haven't officially alerted. So that would include mm -hmm. overweighting yourself in anything. Okay. I have three other accounts that I'm considering liquidating and putting in. Um, but I think what I'll do is I'll put a spreadsheet out so you can see it. So yeah, a lot of people will say, okay, I have this much total money. And then they may use one account for gold, another account for emerging markets, a, a big one for the bonds and a big one for the equities. Mm -hmm. so, so you could have accounts all over the place, but as long as you just say, okay, here's my total assets to, to follow portfolio builder with. I understand the asset allocation, the risk management, mm -hmm. and then I can just not worry about, you know, you're not going to, you, you don't want four spreadsheets and four accounts. Trust me, it's not yeah, necessary. Right. And yeah, pain in the butt. We can make life so easy, so simple. Hmm. With, with, with a lot less work too. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Thank you. That that was very helpful. Yeah, sure. Yes, you see, it only takes minutes to fix people's spreadsheets. So yeah. hopefully that encourages mm -hmm. everybody to put it to work. We're going to get it set up so that everybody has a link to their spreadsheet at the top of their email in the near future, as well as links to all the recordings on how to uh, fill out your spreadsheet. So I'll get that. And I might have time to make a new condensed video on how to do that. But it's pretty easy. I think we're all getting to pretty good feel for it um i don't think mine updated how do i get that uh, because i don't see that trade alert yeah it didn't update what's that my my spreadsheet didn't update uh looks like you have the right one yeah so you got the right this is the latest uh feature set so you're good to go now i do have more feet the reason why you should just use a spreadsheet we issue instead of copying and making your own uh -huh. is, is because as time goes on, I'll be able to push updates to your platform. Mm -hmm. and right now, we don't have that technology. Right now, we issue a new spreadsheet, and yeah. then you're just going to have to copy your trades over. But yeah. in the near future, I'll be able to push an update straight to your platform, which will be cool. Um, so right now, you're not missing out on anything. And... Um, and we'll just have to copy paste our trades from one sheet to the to the next every time there's a new upgrade. Yeah. But I do want to put more more and more capital towards this platform technology because it does it, it serves it serves good value. Yeah, it makes sense. All right, guys. Well, I think we'll call it a day for today and meet back on Monday. I appreciate everybody hanging in there till the. So the very end, we still got 31 live. So uh, great job listening in and learning and participating today. And I can't wait to see everybody back Monday. All right, guys. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Have Jason. A great Thank weekend. you, Tony. Bye. Hey, you too, Tony. Appreciate Thank you, your guys. Time, Stay Have safe. Have a good weekend, guys. Stay safe and Thanks, try to Barry. do something that puts a smile on your face, okay? <laughs>